All right, that's awesome. What a fun game, as Simon says. You know, and Simon said, clap your hands. You clap your hands. Simon says, raise your hands. You raise your hands. What, what, a, fun, what a fun game. What something fun to do here on Family Sunday with all of the kiddos and the families who are here today. And it really sets me up for what I want to talk to you about today from the Word of God. What I believe God's put on my heart to share just for a few short minutes on this Family Sunday Uh, We have been in a series called The DNA of a Leader. We have been talking about the fact that God wants us all to be leaders. Jesus made it very clear that we are the salt and we are the light of the world. We have been called to lead in some form, some shape, or some capacity wherever God has us at this present moment in our life. And we've looked at Jabez, we've we've talked about Moses and other leaders that are mentioned throughout the scriptures about what it takes and some good principles that we should have in being a good leader, like having a good attitude like Joshua and Caleb. But today I I wanna end this series and I wanna talk to you about the fact that not only do great leaders lead, but also great leaders are led. You see, you gotta understand, everybody has something leading them. Everybody is led by something or someone, whether it's a set of values, whether it's a goal, a mission, a vision, or whether it's even a, a God that you worship. Like we believe we, we worship God. We, we know we worship Jesus. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. And as believers, we're, we are supposed to be led by Him. When Just as when Simon said, lift your hands, you lift your hands. As a believer, we're not so much worried about Simon We're worried about what Jesus says. And when Jesus says to do something, we're supposed to do that as a believer. When Jesus tells us to do certain things, we should do those things. And if Jesus says there are things that we ought not to be doing, we should listen to his voice, even the things he says that we should not be doing. And what I want you to understand today is whether you're under the sound of my voice today and you're eight years old, or whether you're 80 years old, I think we all need to be reminded that God has called us to be led by him. We should all be following Jesus. We should all be listening to what Jesus says. There are so many voices that are coming at us every single day that is trying to tell us to do certain things. It may be a friend that you have at school that's trying to tell you to do bad things. It may be things uh, that come across the television, movies, songs that you hear uh, through streaming platforms or things you see at school or things you see on movies or on your phone or your computer. All these different voices, all these different things are trying to tell us all these different things of what we should do, what we shouldn't do. But as a believer, we shouldn't be worried about what Simon says or what everyone else says. We should be focused on what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say? Because he is who is going to lead my life. He is the one that I'm going to follow. He is the one that I'm going to choose to listen to. And I want to challenge every single one of us today. Are you listening to the voice of Jesus? Are you listening and doing what Jesus says? Because there are things that he tells us to do that we should be doing as believers. There are things he also says that we should not do that we should not do as people who are listening to what Jesus says. And I want to, you know, just as we said, you know, when we played our quick game of Simon Says, hey, there's some things Jesus says to do. Jesus said, clap your hands, all you people. Hey, clap your hands right now, right here. Yeah, 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 come on. Clap your hands. Jesus said, clap your hands. Jesus said, raise your hands. I want you to raise your hands right there in your seat. Just raise your hands up to the Lord. Jesus said, raise your hands. Jesus said to give. Jesus said to worship. Jesus said to forgive. Jesus even told us to share our faith, to tell people about him, to invite people to church and to go out in the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in. And hey, listen, before the service is over, I want you to come down front of the altar. Grab some invite cards. Do what Jesus said. We make it super easy for you. Invite somebody to this service. Invite somebody to the nine o'clock service to come sit with you. You know why? Because Jesus said we're supposed to. Jesus said go out in the highways and the hedges. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. We should do what Jesus says to do because there are so many voices that are trying to tell you to do different things. And I want to just tell you, Jesus has given us three things in our lives as believers to help us to know 
what he wants us to do. He's given us three things to help us follow his voice. I want to give them to you very quickly this morning. The first one is found in John chapter 15, around verse number, or excuse me, John 16, verse number five. Jesus begins to talk about the Holy Spirit. I want everybody to say that with me. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Jesus tells us in John 16 about the Holy Spirit. He's talking here in John 16, verse 5, and he says, I'm going to, he said, my father is going to send the Holy Spirit. He says, I need to leave in physical form. I need to go back to heaven and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And there's a reason why he needs to come. He's going to come because he's going to be your counselor. He's going to be your helper. You see, the Holy Spirit helps us. He helps us to know what to do. He helps us to know what is wrong and what is right. He helps us to learn God's word. The Bible said that he guides us into all truth. And when you're reading the Bible at night or when you're reading the Bible by yourself, you can ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me to understand this word. Help me to understand what I'm reading. Help me to understand what you're trying to say to me through this text that I'm reading in the scriptures. The Holy Spirit will help you. And he'll help you every single day of your life if you listen to him. If you're at school and you're hanging around some people and they're trying to get you to do some bad things and you have, you have your conscience on the inside of saying this isn't right, there's something in your head that says you know you shouldn't be doing this, you know this isn't a good decision, you know your mom and dad wouldn't be proud of this right now, you know Jesus doesn't want you to do this. If you have that going on the inside of you, you have that in your conscience, you hear that in your mind, that's the Holy Spirit. He's using your conscience to guide you. He's speaking to you. He's trying to guide you and keep you away from the wrong things, and he's trying to lead you into the right things. Hear me, mom and dad. The Holy Spirit, he wants to help you. And just as we, you know, we talk about praise breaks and we talk about having coffee breaks, you need to have a Holy Spirit break. You need to have times when you're facing tough decisions, when you're having to make a big decision for your job or a big decision for your business or a big decision for your family or your finances. You're about to make a a major purchase or do some big investment, you need to take some time with the Holy Spirit and say, will you help me? Will you guide me? Will you lead me? Because Jesus said, I'm sending the Holy Spirit and he will guide you into all truth and he will help you and he will comfort you. And so Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us. And so when friends say, hey, take this, smoke this, drink this, do this. If the Holy Spirit, he'll speak to you and he'll say, no, you shouldn't be doing that. No, you shouldn't be going here. No, you shouldn't talk that way. No, you shouldn't be listening to this. That's the Holy Spirit. He will help you to do what Jesus wants you to do. And then secondly, Jesus not only has given us the Holy Spirit to help us to follow Jesus and do what Jesus says, not only do we have the Holy Spirit, and it's important that you, you need to understand when you accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit takes up residence in you. He seals you, but then you also need to ask him to fill you. The Bible said we should be filled with the Spirit. There should be times that you, you take time and you say, Lord, fill me with the Spirit again. Fill me afresh with this Holy Spirit. Feel me. Let me receive new power. Let me hear your voice like I've never heard your voice. Parents, I encourage you to take time with your kids at home. When you're in your living room, when you're tucking them in the bed at night, I encourage you, lay your hands upon them and say, Lord, fill my children with the Holy Spirit. We're living in a crazy world. All these different types of voices are trying to get their attention, take them down all these different paths. Lay your hands on them and say, Lord, let my children be led by the Spirit. Let my children be filled with the Spirit. Let my daughter have the fruit of the Spirit. Let my son walk in the Spirit because the Holy Spirit helps us to do what Jesus wants us to do. Because remember, as leaders, our number one question we're asking is what does Jesus say? Jesus says. The second thing we have not only do we have the Holy Spirit, but number two, we have the Word of God. I want you to see this with me. We have the Bible. We have the Word of God. And we as believers, we believe that this is God's inspired Word to us. 
We believe that God inspired men and women, inspired by the Holy Spirit. We believe that he used them in different forms, different capacities, and God used them to write this word. And we believe contained in these 66 books, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we believe this is God's word revealed to us. We believe that God inspired these people to write this text as hundreds of different authors over thousands of different years and they're all writing with, with such precision and unity that they're pointing to the coming and, and they're speaking about the Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to die for your sins, for my sins, and be raised from the dead. And listen, listen, you need to understand, this Bible is something that you should respect. The Word of God is something that you should be in on a consistent basis. The Bible will tell you what God says is good. The Bible will tell you what God says is right. If you're trying to make a major decision, get in God's Word. If you've got a problem you're facing and you're trying to figure out how to handle it, I promise you somewhere in this Bible, it'll give you instructions on how to handle with what you're dealing with. You say, no, I, I, I don't. No, no, I'm telling you, there's nothing that you're not facing that is not talked about somewhere in the Word of God. And listen, maybe, maybe you got friends that are trying to convince you to do things, or maybe you got voices trying to ask you certain things. Go to the Word of God and say, what does God's Word say about this? Because the truth be told, your feelings can mess you up. Your feelings can lie to you. And you shouldn't do things and make decisions based on just your feelings. Because your feelings change. One minute they're good, one minute they're bad, one minute it feels right, and then once you, you do what you thought felt good, man, you regret the decision you made because your feelings can fool you. And so you need to go to the Word of God because the Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but the Word of the Lord is going to stand forever. It says the grass withers and the flower fades, but the Word of our God is going to endure forever. And so, so moms and dads, hear me. Grandmas and grandpas, husbands and wives, hear me, young people. Hear me, children. You need to build your life on the Word of God. The Bible said building our life on this word is like building it on a firm foundation. You can't go wrong building your life based on God's word. And listen, we not only do what this word says to do, but we also stay away from things that the word says we shouldn't do. And even though we may see it out there with our friends and other family members, we may see it on TV and in movies and social media. They may be promoting all these different things that the Bible says is not, not good for us, things we shouldn't have. We don't listen to those voices. Remember, just because the world says, just because Facebook says, just because Simon says, doesn't mean it's right. The only one who has the ultimate authority over our life, the only one who is always right, is Jesus. And remember, he sends the Holy Spirit to help us, and he's also given us the Word of God to help us to know what is wrong and what is right. And here's the last thing, and I'm specifically talking to children today. I'm talking to people who are children who are living at home with your parents because this is Family Sunday. I want you to understand, not only has God given you the Holy Spirit, not only does he give you the word of God to know what Jesus says to do, but number three, God gives you your parents. He gives you your mom. He gives you your dad. And if your mom and dad is not in the picture, if for some reason they're not with you, hey, he'll give you a grandma. He'll give you a grandpa. He'll give you a stepmom, a stepdad. He'll place adults in your life to guide you, mentor you, and lead you. And you need to listen to those voices. You need to respect those voices. We live in a time when there's going to be people that try to get you to disobey your parents. They're going to try to talk you into not listening to your mom and your dad. They're going to try to tell you that your mom and dad are stupid, that they don't know what they're talking about. They're trying to keep you from fun. Oh, they're crazy. They're uncool. You don't have cool parents. Listen, God doesn't want your parents to be cool. God didn't call your mom and dad to be your friend. He called them to be your parent, to guide you, to shepherd you, to lead you, to care for you. And sometimes the greatest way that mom and dad show you they love you is when they tell you no. Sometimes the greatest way mom and dad are leading you towards a relationship with Jesus is when they tell you no to certain things and you need to trust them. 
You need to, I know it may make you upset. I know you may be like, oh my goodness. What? They're, they're loving you. They're protecting you. They're watching over you. They're keeping you from things that could cause you great harm and great pain. And you need to trust them. You need to trust the ones that God has placed in your life to guide you, lead you, and care for you. So listen to me on this Family Sunday. There's three things God gives us to help us to know what Jesus says. And I want to, give them to I want to re- review them very quickly before we ready, get ready to dismiss for Family Sunday. Number one, He gives you the Holy Spirit. Number two, He gives us the Word of God. But number three, He gives us our mom, our dad, or a grandma, or a grandpa, or somebody He places in your life of an adult to be a person who mentors and leads you and, and helps give you your morals and your convictions and your standards for your life. This is what I want us to do on this Family Sunday. I want you right there where you're at. I want you to stand up with me as a family. I want you to gather with me at this altar on this family Sunday. And I want us to pray for families. I believe the family, it it was God's first institution. It's the very first thing that God put in order on this planet. When he made Adam and Eve, he created a family. Because families are important to God. Not only does God love families, but God loves your family. God cares about your family. And God wants the best for your family. And I want you to come down this altar. Our campus host is coming forward. Our praise team, our band is going to begin to play. And I preach short on this family Sunday on purpose. Number one, because I know we got kids in the room and their attention spans ain't quite like an adult. And I'm respecting that today. And I want them to understand this message. But number two, I want to give some intentional time to pray for families, to allow families to pray together. Because I still believe a family that prays together Together is a family that can stay together. And so I want you moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, I want you to grab your family. I want you to grab your children, your grandchildren. Or if you're here today and your family's not with you, maybe you came by yourself. Maybe they're at work or maybe they're off somewhere in a different part of the country or, or maybe you're just here by yourself. I want you to join me at this altar this morning. I want us to pray for families. I want you to begin to pray and say, God, fill my family with the Holy Spirit. God, let my family hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. God, my family is facing some tough things. Help our family be led by the Holy Spirit. Lord, help me to get in your word in greater times this year. Help me to see your word. Help me to listen to your word. I want you to begin to pray and ask God to help your family be led by the Holy Spirit, be led by the word. And if you're a mom and dad coming, I want you to pray. Say, God, help me be a good mom. Help me to be a better dad. And children, if you're coming, lay your hands on your mom and dad. Pray for your mom and dad. They work hard. They try to do their very best. Nobody gives us a book and says how to be the best mom, the best dad. All we can do is be led by the Spirit. All we can do is read this Word and let God help us to be the best mom, the best dad we can be. So I want you to come. Let's pray. Campus host, I want you to take it over right here. Let's begin to pray for families in this sanctuary on this Family Sunday.